What's up guys, this is Yao here and you're welcome to another lesson, grammar lesson, right here on learnaccount.com. Coming right up. Hello again. So in our last grammar class, I introduced to you the concept of pronouns in general. All right. So we got to know what pronouns are and then why we use them. And we also looked at some examples of three pronouns. And then we ended with the types of pronouns that we have. And then I mentioned that in our subsequent three pronoun lessons, we're going to take each pronoun type and look at all the three pronouns that we have under them. So today begins that, and we are beginning that with subject pronouns, okay? Subject pronouns. And if you recall, subject and object pronouns together form what we call personal pronouns, okay? So in effect, we are looking at one part of personal pronouns. All right, so what is a subject pronoun? So from our last grammar class, we got to know that pronouns basically take the place of nouns, okay? And we got to know also that nouns are names, okay? So names of people, names of objects, names of anything at all, all right? So that in a sentence like, Kofi eats rice, Kofi di mo, Kofi is a name of a person, right? So Kofi is a noun, okay? So we can choose to replace Kofi with a pronoun, in which case we'll get he eats rice, okay? He eats rice. Now, what we need to know is that nouns or names play different roles in sentences, all right? So names are not just put in sentences. They are put there to perform certain functions, okay? And one of those functions is to be the subject in the sentence, all right? So what is this subject function that we are talking about? So when we say a noun or a name is the subject in the sentence, what we basically mean is that the noun or the name is referring to an entity that is doing something in the sentence. So performing an action in that sentence, or it is referring to an entity that is being something, to be, like be something, all right, in a sentence. So basically, if we have a noun or a name in a sentence, then it is referring to an entity that the sentence is telling us to be doing something or to be being something, all right? Then that particular noun is the subject noun, okay? So using our earlier example, Kofi eats rice, okay? Kofi is the subject because Kofi is the one performing the action of eating, all right? He is doing something within the sentence. He is eating rice. He is doing that. So Kofi is the subject noun in the sentence, all right? So now that you know what subject nouns are, and you know from our introductory lesson to three pronouns, that pronouns basically take the place of nouns, okay? Let's use this knowledge to determine what subject pronouns are. Okay, cool. So if we have a sentence like, again, Kofi eats rice, Kofi di mo, okay? Kofi is eating a lot of rice today, right? <laughs> okay, so if we have a sentence like that, Kofi eats rice, Kofi is the subject noun here, right? Because Kofi is actually the one performing the action of the eating, okay? Now, if we are able to use a pronoun to replace Kofi, which we did before with he, then he becomes the subject pronoun because once he replaces the noun, I mean the subject noun Kofi, he assumes the function that Kofi was playing as a noun in the sentence. Okay, do, do, do you get it? <laughs> okay, so there's a sentence and there's a subject noun in it, okay? A noun that is performing an action in there, okay? And then we are able to use a pronoun to replace that noun, okay? Once we are able to do that, that particular pronoun assumes the function that that particular noun or name was playing before it was kicked out, 
okay and in this case kofi was performing an action so kofi was a subject now and once it is off replaced by a pronoun that pronoun assumes that function of subject okay so it becomes the subject pronoun so now that we understand all that let's look at the subject pronouns that we have in chi all right so we have me me we have wo wo we have ono ono we have eno eno we have yen yen we have mo mo and then we have one one all right so you can tell that this is the same set of examples that we gave in our introductory lesson to chi pronouns right so me wo ono eno yen mo and one seven just seven right try and keep them now let's try to use them in some sentences all right so we have meko suku wo kumase meko suku wo kumase woto jom woto jom ononso aba ononso aba enwana eteye enwana eteye Yenina nom in siu. Yenina nom in siu. And the last one is one yina nom in sa. One yina nom in sa. So I hope you identified all the subject pronouns in the sentences, right? Good. So if you check the sentence examples that we just gave, you will see that apart from the first and then the second, Okay, so meko suku wo kumase, and then the second one wotojo. Apart from these two, the rest had the subject pronouns separated from the verbs. Okay, so you can go back and then check. So in each of the others, I intentionally inserted a word to separate the subject pronoun from the verb. And I did so for you to see the subject pronouns just as they are, right? So just as we listed them at first, okay? So me, wo, ono, eno, yen, mo, and won, just like that, okay? Because they do change, okay? They change in forms depending on how they are used, okay? And this brings us to two points to note about these subject pronouns. And the first point has to do with the change in forms of these pronouns, depending on how they are used, just as we talked about, all right? Okay, so what are the changes? So for the subject pronouns, ono, eno, yen, and then one, okay? So these four out of the seven. So ono, eno, yen and then one so for these subject pronouns their forms change when they are directly followed by verbs okay so unlike in our examples where i had to break them off with some words if they were directly followed by the verbs then they were going to change in forms each of them i mean each of those four okay they will change their forms so the next question will be what do they change into right okay so for ono ono will change to o if it is directly followed by a verb okay so ono will change to o just o if it is directly followed by a verb okay and then eno eno will change to e the first e if it is directly followed by a verb okay and then for yen yen will change to the first ye yeah, ye yeah, okay 
when it is directly followed by a verb and not separated okay and then one will also change to wo, wo, okay if it is directly followed by a verb okay so just like the first two examples that we gave mikosuku wo kumase and then wotojo okay which had the verbs directly following the subject pronouns if we had the verbs following any of these four subject pronouns then the forms were going to change to o for ono e for eno ye for yen and then wo for one all right do you want to try that okay let's try that so let's use these four pronouns as the subject pronouns in the first two sentences okay and see how it goes all right so we had meko suku wo kumase and then we had woto jom right so we are going to use these four subject pronouns in place of me and then wo okay and see how it goes so if we use ono in the first sentence we will have o ko suku wo kumase Oko suku wo kumase and not ono ko suku wo kumase no no oko suku wo kumase all right if we use eno in the first sentence we will have eko suku wo kumase eko suku wo kumase and not eno ko suku wo kumase all right eko suku wo kumase whatever that is <laughs> If we use yen in the second sentence, we will have yeto jom, yeto jom, and not yen to jom, no, okay, yeto jom. And then if we use one in the second sentence, we will have wo to jom, wo to jom, and not one to jom, all right, cool. Now on to the second point and this you have already seen in action, all right? So the second point has to do with the fact that if you have a verb directly following any, I mean any of these subject pronouns, you combine the subject pronoun and the verb together with all tense markers into one word when you are writing, okay? So if you have a subject pronoun and then a verb, all right and there is no element separating them so you have the verb directly following the subject pronoun then you need to combine them into a single word when you write it all right and this includes all tense markers so whether there is a tense marker that is showing future showing that the action is still ongoing and all that you put all of them together as a single word when you are writing, okay? So that is why in the first sentence, me ko suku wo kumase, we had me and then we had ko together as one word, right? So me is a subject pronoun and then ko is a verb and there's nothing separating them so we combine them into a single word, okay? And in the second one, we had wo to jum, so wo is the subject pronoun here and then to is to sing okay the jum there is actually a song so to jum together as a unit is to sing but then to is to sing and then jum is a song so it's like sing song all right so we had wo as the subject pronoun and then we had to as the verb and we combine them because there's nothing separating them they are together so you combine them as a single word and it doesn't matter which verb or which subject pronoun that we use we are still going to combine the subject pronoun and the verb together as a unit if only the verb is directly following the subject pronoun okay so mekosuku wo kumase wokosuku wo kumase yekosuku wo kumase wokosuku wo kumase all of them you will have the subject pronoun and the verb together. So if I say wudidi dodo, all right? Wudidi dodo. I'm kidding, all right? <laughs> so if I say wudidi dodo, wo 
is the subject pronoun here. And then we have the verb didi. Okay, so nothing is separating them. We put them together as a unit when we are writing. We didi dodo. So we can change the pronoun, we can change the verb. As long as the verb is following the pronoun, whichever pronoun it is, we have to combine them into a single unit in writing. Okay, so this is where we end today's lesson. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and then leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll see you next time.